And welcome back, everybody, to the TV show on this beautiful July 17th. I'm here with the wonderful Rhea Hughes and the adequate Angelo Cataldi. <laughs> uh, I'm Jay Black, and uh, let's just hop into it, guys, because we are in the midst of a huge news story that has taken over basically everything, as it should, because, you know, anytime that there is uh, uh, violence of any sort, uh, which there should not be, but when there is, uh, we, we have to talk about it. But I wanted to talk specifically with regards to Trump's, uh, the attempt on Trump's life um, of a TV issue that I believe Angelo Cataldi and Rhea Hughes has some deep insight on because they spent a number of years talking about things that might have been uncomfortable for their bosses. Just to set this up, Morning Joe, uh, which is on MSNBC, was preempted on Monday. And MSNBC used a very, you know, flimsy excuse of we were doing uh, lo like unified coverage, which was an obvious lie. They weren't doing that. And the rumor that the New York Post reported was that they were worried that uh, Joe Scarborough was going to say something or, or talk about it in a way that would make the network look bad. And that, to me, was just shocking because he's your lead anchor in the morning. If you can't trust him to not say something that's going to hurt the company, why is he on? So I, I don't understand this. Angelo, tell me yeah. what happened and tell me about you and the way you did your show. This happens. This happens. And the reason that Joe Scarborough was not on Monday is that MSNBC lied to him, all right? They told him they were going to strictly NBC coverage on all their networks, and they were going to that, and so there was no place for him. And that is understandable. If you're going there, round the clock kind of thing, then the guys that are scheduled have to back off. Right. But they didn't do that. They went to other programming at M MSNBC because they didn't trust Joe and Mika to handle the situation well because they are very harsh opponents of Trump. Sure. All right? Here's where it got fascinating to me. The next day, Tuesday, Scarborough comes out, waits an hour. And I know why he did that, because I would do the same thing. <laughs> Wait till you have max audience. Prime time. <laughs> uh, 7.30 to 8, that's max yes. audience when we were on the show. And then let him have it. And yeah. he went right after his bosses and he said, the next time that happens, I'm done. And he's yeah. right, because they're in breach of contract. They contracted him for that hour. And then they put someone else on without his approval. He has every right to walk away from that network, as does Mika. Here's the thing now, all right? Here's the bottom line. You said it perfectly, Jay. If you hire somebody to handle that, yeah. Those people are the people you need to trust to have great judgment in the moment to handle whatever is in front of them. And Rhea, we dealt with them lots of these issues at the time. We Tons did, we of times. Have. I mean, right? the political climate that is today is such that, well, so you didn't trust him with this, but you trust him the other four days of the week. Yeah. It just, it really... Now, I don't watch it, obviously, because I'm kind of busy doing my own show, uh, you know, at that time in the morning. But my my sister and my mother, who I was with, are diehards of it. You know, the audience knew. You know, Monday afternoon, they're like, you, you know, Morning Joe wasn't on. And I'm like, who's Morning Joe? Because I just, I honestly, yeah. I don't watch it because I'm working. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I can guarantee you, if that had been pulled with Angelo, that something had happened in the sports world, and the bosses had pulled all of all of us off of the day. We're just gonna, you know, I don't know what they would have said. Angela would have quit. I just, I mean, I I have no doubt that that's what he would have done because that's what you that's your job. And as long as you're contracted, that is your hours. Those are your hours. Right. Um, uh, this happened to me rather directly. It's similar. In uh, right after the Phillies won the World Championship in two thousand eight. Um, the, uh, the guy that ran our station, Dad, who was really a sales guy, he decided that uh, he was going to make budget for the year by selling most of our show. So we were not on much at all. And we were in break more than half the time. And um, I went berserk. I went berserk. It was in the Union League, which is a real classic place. And Andy Bloom, our boss, came in and I went nuts. And he said it wasn't his decision. 
that they had just sold out the show. We went in breaks for nine or 10 minutes at a time. It was outrageous, yeah. It was outrageous. And basically I found out that I was doing a second shift that day on on a simulcast with Michael Smirkanish at the actual rally. And they were opting out of me on my own station. I was heard more on WPHT than I was on my own station. And I just said to them afterwards, I says, uh, first of all, I'm ripping you on the air tomorrow, which I did. <laughs> and the next time it happens, you won't be talking to me. You'll be talking to my agent, Steve Mountain. And he, they don't want to talk to him. He was really nasty. You ha- Here's the bottom line. You have to control the suits. I'm going to apply this to one other thing right now. Right now at WIP, they are absolutely banning anyone from talking about a controversy involving Howard Eskin. All right. And I would not have permitted it. Do you understand? I would have gone to my bosses the day they said, no one's talking about it. And I would have said, I'm talking about it. And they would say, no, the lawyers said you can't. And I'm going to, and I would say to them, the lawyers don't program my show. <laughs> I have enough faith in myself to stay within the boundaries of good taste, to not automatically call everybody guilty and to handle the sensitive situation the right way. And Jay, I did it for 33 years and I never got fired for doing it. Right. You have to be smart enough to deal with it. And if these empty suits that run things now, just assume the lawyers should be making those decisions. No, they yeah. should never be making. The minute you exclude your audience on a talk show from talking, you're not doing your job. And what happens the next time there's a scandal involving someone else? Right. You're going to talk about it? And, and there's there's two things I just want to point out, Jay. Uh, number one, I've been off the air most of the last two weeks dealing with a family emergency. And number two, I couldn't control Angelo when I worked with him <laughs> at WIP. And I certainly can't control him on the podcast. I'd just like to establish those two things. Un- understood. And, understood. And you know what, Jay? you got to do that because it's got the show's got your name on. Right. You're not the lawyer's name. Do your show. I give Joe a lot of credit. I might have quit. Right. I might well, I know you would have. You I don't know that I would have gone back on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. You have that little faith in me? I'll go somewhere else and I'll kick your ass in your time slot. How's <laughs> that? Yeah. I, I mean, it just comes down to me with this idea that if you are hired to give takes, I want to hear your takes. And sometimes yeah. those takes might upset me, but that's not the job of the network to to make the audience comfortable at all times. Sometimes being uncomfortable is what the audience wants. And especially from someone who you think is intelligent and has good takes, if that upsets me, maybe that changes my mind. I, I and think, the thing is, right. in, in Joe's case and in Angelo's case, people who have done it for a really long time, they kind of know where the line is. I mean, right. and it's what they've been doing for a long time. And, you know, they they rarely, you know, does it get crossed sometimes? Absolutely. Angelo knows he crossed the line many times, but you generally know where the line is and how far you can take it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a, a good spot to end on because I want to talk about knowing when to end something. Um, because Angelo texted or emailed me with a great idea as to, you know, again, we differ on the bear. I'm happy with season three. Angelo is not. Uh, but he he came up with a good point, And I think it really comes in the uh, uh, the discourse right now about the way TV is done, because, you know, we have two years in between seasons. We've got six episode seasons that they film all at the same time. It's, it's a big change from when we were growing up and there would be 22, 23 episodes shot. It started in September, ended in May. You could set your watch by it. Um, and, you know, they made the decision whether or not to renew based on the ratings at the end of each year. So uh, Angelo's point, and I'll let you take it away, Angelo. You tell me your point about the, the bottom line. When the beer did so well the first two seasons, it got renewed for the next two seasons. Yeah. Yeah. But they were going to film it together. They didn't have two seasons of story to tell. They would never, if there were, if if this season three was going to determine the future of that show, there's no way they wouldn't have resolved. 
Do you know it took a whole season and Carm still hasn't called his girlfriend? He still <laughs> hasn't got that, right? That's, you just you just had a spoiler for me. Like, do you, oh, I'm does sorry. he think she, no, oh, does fun. he think she's still his girlfriend? Right. You <laughs> saw the can't. first seven episodes and yeah. he hadn't called her then. No. He's not, not gonna happen. Nothing. I'm not sure he's out of the freezer yet. <laughs> they never showed me that. They basically took a season and marked their spot and did nothing. They did. There was no progress anywhere. And you know when I wrote, wrote you that uh, that email, Jay? I was in the midst of something I never thought I would experience. Childbirth. Oh, God. <laughs> I was in episode eight of The Bear season three, which is an entire episode of a mother, uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and what's her name? Sugar. Uh, Sugar. Uh, yeah. and, Abby and Ellie. Talking about, and it, I guess on some level it was deep, but primarily it was excruciating. It was <laughs> a 45 minute labor pain. All right. And I wrote it because I knew nothing would happen. And then when it ends, spoiler alert, you never see okay. or have the baby. <laughs> this is the worst season of a good TV show in the history of the medium. And I'm not alone on this. Check yeah. Rotten Tomatoes. I know, it's a lot of people agree. officially in the rotten part for audience. And this is after the audience ratings were 98, 100. It's now 58. And when, it when, stinks. When the best part of this celebrated show is John Cena's cameo that he did <laughs> that I absolutely yeah. think he yeah. nailed it. He yeah. was awesome. I was like, thank you. Okay. I finally got something here. I, I, I've been disappointed. And if Angelo tells me what's happening in episode eight, I only went through it one time for a reason because <laughs> I never wanted to go through labor a, a second time. So no, thank you. You, you know what it reminds, it reminds me of, uh, do you remember a show called anger management with Charlie yeah. Sheen? Yeah. Like, I don't think many people do. It was the follow-up show that he did after Two and a Half Men. And they struck a deal with FX that if they hit ratings baseline for 10 episodes, yeah. they got a 100-episode se order. Do you remember this, Angelo? Oh, and this is it. exactly the problem. And then they did 90 awful episodes. They yeah. did 90 episodes nobody watched, remember, <laughs> or care about. I... I, I I challenge you to find anger management anywhere streaming because nobody cares about that show. But now they you're challenging me, so I'm looking at it. All right, but Jack, I want to clarify that because you're positive on this uh, on this season, but you also agree you should earn each next season. Is I that do. correct? I, I think that a return to how we used to do TV, not a hundred percent. There are some things that I think we do very well now that we didn't do in the past. But something where the season is a living, breathing thing, where it's produced, you know, at the same time that people are watching it and people can respond to it and the writers can respond to how people are responding. And then, you know, the next season comes at, when it's earned. I do believe that that would be better overall for television. And you're right about that. And season, look, four, by the way, season four will be good. Yeah, I, I, I 100%. Think it's season be four, good. they'll resolve all the stuff they never resolved in season three. And right. there'll be a lot happening and it'll be back to the other pace and it'll be great. But this season will be remembered as basically a black hole in the history of the beer. And it goes back to what you said, Angela, about the suits. The suits wanted four seasons. They should have uh, stuck with three because that's the story that they had. The suits uh, are bad. We don't like the suits. <laughs> So I sent you guys an article. You guys know I'm a unrepentant Billy Joel super fan to my, yes. you know, probably embarrassment, but I love, absolutely love Billy Joel. Uh, his song Vienna has been rediscovered on TikTok. Girls everywhere are saying this song gets me, even though it was written by a dude in 1977 <laughs> about his dad. I mean, but whatever. I'm glad that they found it. And I, you know, I read about this and it coincided with a show uh, retrospective on YouTube where it was Gen Z talking about a show called The Prisoner, which aired. Angela, did you watch The Prisoner when it came out no, in the 60s? did not watch it. It, it was a, a really surreal experimental show. It only lasted one season. 
And, you know, basically Gen Z sort of said the reason why we haven't discovered it yet is because it isn't very memeable. It isn't something that has been put out on TikTok and talked about in little bite-sized formats. And I was thinking about my daughter discovers books through book talk. And, you know, uh, one of the things that they said in this prisoner retrospective is that TV now, things like The Boys, are putting memeable moments into the show because it helps market it. And I was just thinking, number one, two parts of this. Number one, is this the right way, Rhea, to market a show, to put in memeable moments? And number two, do you have a show that is maybe undiscovered by young people that you'd like to, if, if you could, you'd put out and make them watch? So two-part question. Well, what I like about memeable moments, the ones that I like, are the ones that are organic, like the Ted Lasso dart scene. Yes. I could watch that scene a thousand times, and I love Wonderful it. Too. You know, but yeah, put it. My son discovers a lot of stuff on TikTok. He came up to me a couple months ago and says, "What do you like better, LeBron or Michael Jordan?" And I go, "What?" I mean, this kid who doesn't like sports, he discovered the argument on a TikTok TikTok thing and watched the whole thing. And he goes, "I'm a Jordan guy," and I'm like, "You never saw him play." <laughs> you know? So, but but I loved it, and so I was thinking about when I got your email. A show that I would love for him to go back and experience because I think where he is at in his life, Freaks and Geeks, only one season, a wow. phenomenal show for teenagers, not for preteens, but for teenagers. And I thought, you know, I'm going to recommend that to him because, you know, John Apatow did it. All the all the stars who were in it, you know, Jason uh, Siegel, um, what's the guy? I can never remember the guy with three names. He was in it. Um, but uh, James Franco was in it. Franco, There's yeah. a lot of like really young stars in it. But it was, yes, she's terrific. Um, so it's it's a phenomenal show. So like I want to kind of bring that back around to him. But my son is a TikTok. He discovers a lot of stuff from the past on TikTok and comes up and asks me. So I don't not mind it because he actually starts conversations with me based off of stuff he's seen on TikTok. Good. Wow. All right, Angela. What do you uh, think about? Um, first I, I think all, I know uh, what you think about memeable moments. I, I oh, I, but I just want to make this comment before you brand me as an old man, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> that is, um, you asked the wrong person if they saw the prisoner. In my estimation, the best British TV critic in America is Rhea Hughes. Oh yeah, <laughs> and that's British. Rhea, have you seen it? I have not seen it. Would you check it out for us and let us know if it's How, well, when is it from? Because it's from is it? the 60s. It's called The Prisoner. <laughs> and a lot of people say it's a precursor to Lost. So oh, if you liked oh. Lost, it's very similar to Lost. I, mean, I never watched Lost. Yeah. But Rhea, you you know that stuff and you would yeah. know if it's worth watching or not. So I, I okay. would like that. And I, I just want to say that, um, yeah, this memeable stuff doesn't work for me because I'm too old to understand it. But if you need to market your show within the show, the show itself is not good enough. Yeah. The story, the characters, the product should market itself. By the time that show is over, The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, Mad Men, you had to watch the next one and you had to tell 10 people you knew to check it out. Memeable moments are a lazy way to market something rather than just tell the story organically, where Rhea just said. And the show that you should check out, I did this a year ago. Wow, is it great. Binge St. Elsewhere. I believe it's, oh, wow. I believe it's on Hulu. I'll double check on that. It is the beginning of the career of one of the greatest actors in the history of American cinema, Denzel Washington. Oh, and, wow. And you will see him. This is the very start of his career. You will see how he is so good. He is so great that you realize right, right then and there, that guy's got to be a star. He's, he's a brilliant actor, and he's great in that. And there's a lot of other great performances. And it's a hospital story with the most bizarre ending any show has ever had. Absolutely. I mean, I won't give that one away, but <laughs> Elsewhere, you want to check it out. I'll let you know where it is in a second. By the way, the ending of St. Elsewhere leads a lot of people to believe, like, because there were crossovers from St. Elsewhere to other shows. Yeah. So the universe, as imagined by St. Elsewhere, has expanded to include dozens of TV shows, if you look up that theory. It's very Oh, wow. Uh, 
I just going to jump in with my show. There's a show on HBO that I think young people should watch. It's called Mr. Show with Bob and David. It was on for four seasons in the late 90s. And if you were a fan of alternative comedy like I was in the late 90s, it's uh, launched the career of Bob Odenkirk and um, oh, wow. uh, the other one, David, uh, I can't remember his last name now, but uh, Bob Odenkirk was, uh, it started there. He was a writer in Saturday Night Live, started this sketch show. Uh, Paul F. Tompkins, who's from Philadelphia, was on it. It's a great show. And David Cross, excuse me, that's a, that's his name. Check it out, HBO. You can find it right now, all of the episodes. Um, but there's something else you should check out that's even better than Mr. Show, and that's a man named Steven Singer. Rhea, Angelo, you guys know Steven Singer. Tell me about Steven Singer. He's he's incredible. I, you know, here's the thing. Like, my wife is at an age now where she doesn't require a lot of jewelry. I don't know how to say this the right way. <laughs> Let me make it very clear to you, and Steven would agree with me. There is, I hope there's never a time in my life that I do not require jewelry. I'd like to make that very right. clear. I have fewer arguments with her now that require a gift. Oh, but, yes. But <laughs> let me tell you, when one does, yes. I start with a phone call to Steven. Steven, what do you think? <laughs> and it, it'll go from a gold dip rose to a diamond necklace, you know, whatever it is. And the thing about it that I love the most about uh, shopping with Steve, it is I'm getting the honest story because I don't know a darn thing about about jewelry and the fact that he does so much and is so honest about it that, you know, he doesn't even have sales because he yeah. thinks sales are bogus. He yeah. goes, why am I not giving you my best price every day? That's interesting. And that's just tells you what he's about. It's at the other corner of Eighth and Walnut. And if you need any piece of jewelry, you should just go there because you're going to find out it's the best experience you had. Wait, wait, and I just, I wanna, I'm glad you mentioned the gold dip rose because I was out. No, my, my mom and my dad had moved in with my sister a year ago. And my sister said, she goes, she picks it up and it's the gold dip rose. And she said, that was the first thing mom insisted be unpacked from the boxes that the gold dip rose. It's one of her favorite items ever. And I know you got Gail them so many years. I think she's got a dozen. The she gold dip rose. It's beautiful. Yeah, a bouquet. A gonna, he's bouquet. on the phone. He's on he the never phone right now. Me for it. Yeah, I have a gal on the phone right now. She's saying she requires jewelry. I, that's <laughs> I, I don't. I guess she was listening to a live stream of the podcast. I'm not sure what's going yeah. on. So that was a go, mistake. What I did there was a mistake. Right. <laughs> you should go to uh, I hate Stephen Singer dot com, yep. which is available. Right, scroll down the podcast description. The link is right there, and you can go to Steven Singer, our wonderful sponsor. And the only thing more wonderful than Steven Singer is Rhea Hughes, who I'm told has a British show for us, as always. You do. So uh, this is one I, I previewed before, but they dropped season four. And unlike the bear, this continues to be top quality uh, police procedural. It's called Grace. So it's season four. Uh, it, it's Roy Grace is the detective. You know, we stopped like this this season. The first episode was uh, him solving a um, this very strange like these bodies are being dropped in certain places like they shouldn't be there. Like a guy looks like he was drowned, but he's far away from the water. And it turns out he was actually drowned in sheep's milk. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, my grandfather went. Yeah, it's a, a lot of people go. But uh, what I love about it is, like I said, it's a classic police procedural. So there's Roy Grace. He's got his partner who's terrific. The other members of his team, they're not just like, they're not just props for him. They're, there's one guy uh, plays Norman Plotting. He's my favorite detective in it because he's witty. He adds a little humor to it. But the all of the stories, there's there's a historical uh, one, which I cold case is what we call it here in the States. But they're continuing what I had mentioned to everybody in the first season, uh, at the first season that I watched, that Roy Grace's wife had gone missing seven years ago and they keep teasing it and it's coming back big time, this thing. So that's kind of a, I've, I've been waiting to find out what happened to the wife who like he got investigated because they thought he possibly murdered her and they dug up his backyard. That's how strange it was her disappearance, but it's really solid. It's on prime season four. If you're looking for just a strong, well-acted police procedural, Grace is it. Grace. Got it. 
And uh, Angela, I just wanted to tell you real fast why we why we have it. The Prisoner is available on YouTube for free. All episodes yeah. at HD, so you can get it. Anybody listening can watch it for free. Uh, Eighteen episodes. And anger management, shockingly, Jay is available on many different streaming services. <laughs> And nobody's aware of it because a hundred episodes into the ether, you might as well just put it on a spaceship and rock it at the mark. <laughs> Find me one person who's an anger management super fan anywhere on the planet. They should never no. renew that for a hundred episodes. All right, Angela, what do you got for us this week? All right. Um, I, Jay, I, I've abused you a lot on this show, but there's one thing you've been right about. You got to get to go off your ass and you got to go to the movies. Yes. And I did it. I did it uh, Saturday night, old fashioned date night with my wife to see the movie Fly Me to the Moon. It oh, is, nice. um, it's not quite a rom com. It's kind of a historical tweak on the moonwalk, the first time we landed on the moon. It recreates the 19, late 1960s so well. I asked my wife if I could go out and purchase a white short sleeve dress shirt. <laughs> he said no. All right. So that's, a, but in the, in its day, that was a big thing. What made this great, it wasn't the the uh, performance of Scarlett Johansson or Ch Chatham Ta Ch Channing Tatum. Tatum. <laughs> Channing Tatum, because both of them are not really actors, they're movie stars. They play pretty much the same with a little tweak, they play the same character. They're not real actors. Woody Harrelson, however, is spectacular in it. He could not steal the movie more. But that isn't the best part of it. The best part is being in a movie theater when they show you up close a space launch and, and you feel the surround sound. It, it, it yeah. rattles you and, and you watch the the. the, the the incredible explosion as the as it launches off the pad. And it, it was mesmerizing. And I said, at that moment, I said, this is what you can't have at home. You can't experience the movie as it envelops you. At home, it's just not the same thing. And that's why I have made a vow based on Fly Me to the Moon, which I recommend. It was put out by Apple. It will soon be on Apple. Yeah. Uh, it, within a couple of weeks, it's going to be free on Apple. Um, I, watch it in the movies or go to one of the dumb movies Jay tells you to see. With, <laughs> with, uh, superheroes and special effects and all that. We forgot how great the movie going experience is. And Jay, God bless you that you keep reminding us that it's always better in the theater than at home. You will I'm, I'm, I'm going to give some props to my son who inspires me. Uh, we we uh, we're not sponsored by AMC, but I'm going to tell you something right now. If you live near an AMC, buy the AMC A plus subscription. That you get a a list. You get three movies a week, no uh, uh, restrictions at all. You can go see IMAX movies. You can go see it in Prime. You can see it everywhere. Three movies a week. My son sees at least uh, during the summer. He's been seeing two to three movies a week in the theater because we have one right around the block. And uh, it's the best value. If you go twice, you get your money back. So if you want to- What's the go, cost? It's $26 a month. Wow. Good. Um, That's and wow. you get three movies a week. So you can go see wow. 12 movies in a month if you right. want. No restrictions. We're not sponsored, although we will take a sponsorship from them. <laughs> but go get it if you live near an AMC and go all the time. And Angelo's right. It's the best feeling in the world being in a seeing it on the big screen. So uh, true. All right. I'm going to talk to Rhea about this because I feel like Rhea is going to be more responsive to my review. I'm excited. Okay. I don't know what's well, happening here. Well, the All Star game. I watched yes. with Penny. You know, my youngest is a huge baseball fan now. Yeah. I don't, I didn't watch a lot of baseball prior to this year. I didn't realize that they have an innovation with the helmet cam yeah. on the catcher where you can watch the pitch coming in in a first person perspective. I've never seen anything like this. It was so cool. And you got a sense of how fast those pitches were coming yeah. in and how quick you have to be to swing the bat. 
I don't understand why this isn't all over the place being advertised heavily as the helmet cam. It can't be too hard to equip every catcher with a helmet cam. Rhea, am I wrong? Is this the coolest thing ever? See, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not on Angelo saying I love this kind of stuff. Now I don't want it used all the time, but I, I think it's great for somebody like Penny, like your daughter, yeah. to just realize how fast that ball is coming in. Now you know, I love the innovation with the cameras. I love the overhead. I love yeah. the drone. I love when when they had the player at the plate and they're showing you all the different angles of a swing. And I will say that right before we turned on the home run derby. On Monday night, we were watching the Westminster Dog Show, and I was amazed at all the cameras that they had there and the eye around it. So I love that. I like the innovation, as long as it doesn't take away from a play in the game. That's right. where that's where I draw the line. But the innovation, seeing that kind of stuff, I think it's phenomenal. It adds to it, right, Angelo? Yeah. Right. It makes all it. Right. You were you were instinctively correct to go to Rhea. All I want to say about it is this. If you would like to know when an event is no longer in its prime, you would see <laughs> tons of gimmicks, like these interviews with the player during the game, which is just totally... Uh, it's ins uh, That is insane. Totally ridiculous. Um, it's all gimmickry because the game itself is not compelling enough. I When I watch the All-Star game, and I have the benefit of doing it all the way back to Pete Rose or Ray Fossey and all the excitement that happened in real games then. They didn't need any of that. They need it now because the game itself stinks. And I am proud to state, although I did see the uh, write-ups about it this uh, today, um, I didn't watch one second of the All-Star game. You know why, Rhea? Because I didn't have to anymore. I don't work on sports talk radio. Hello, you never talked about it when you were here. You hated it. So, I mean, <laughs> okay. like... Right. Technically, you're right. Anyway. But here's what I will say. I think Major League Baseball, like they changed the rules for the home run derby. Yep. And it was understandable. I was literally watching it with my 86 year old mother. She kind of figured it out before me because she's smarter than me. But we got it. Like we got it real quick. Alec Bowen was the first guy up. I was like, oh, okay, the 40 pins got this. I've got, you know, before when they were doing all this crazy stuff, I was like, all right, I'm so con like, don't confuse me. When I'm watching an all-star game, I just want to watch the game. I, I, I like the home run derby and I like the all-star game because the Phillies had eight players in it. It was great. And helmet cams are the way of the future. Everyone should have a helmet cam going forward. It's wonderful. Angela, what did we talk about this week? And where's one thing I want to say about you watching the, of the home run derby with your mom, Maria. Yes. She would have been better off watching one of Jay's um, lifetime films. <laughs> she now, would now, have Ange enjoyed it more. Quick, just real quick story, because I told Jay this. We sat down, the anthem singer started, and my mother looked at me and goes, she's drunk. Yeah. She is drunk. Oh. And we just, we were dying. It was, it really was our favorite moment of the night was the anthem singer. So I'm glad you brought that up again. That was bad. <laughs> wow. Oh, man, it was that bad. All right. <laughs> if you want to see Morning Joe, it, it is available MSNBC at any day now. We could expect Joe Scarborough to resign on the air. That's exciting <laughs> television. The beer. If you want to waste your time, watch it. <laughs> you can, ladies and gentlemen, you can go from from season two to season four and miss nothing. I mean nothing. So don't even bother with episode three of uh, season three. But if you have to, it's on Hulu. Uh, the Prisoner is also available on Amazon Prime. I'd love for Rhea to check that out. Sometime. I will check it out. She's British and she knows British uh, TV. Saint Elsewhere is on Hulu. You can binge the whole thing. Jay, what was the uh, old show you're bringing back? Oh, uh, it was Mr. Show with Bob and David, which is available on HBO Max or Max. Right. I'm sorry. Great. Uh, Grace season four, great English show, is on Prime, and um, uh, Fly Me to the Moon is in movie theaters. Soon will be on Apple TV if you want to check it out. And if, the, if you didn't see the All-Star game, don't go back and look at it because the only <laughs> thing that was good was some helmet cam thing. That nobody cares about. Helmet cams are fantastic. But it's also fantastic is our great sponsor, Steven Singer. You can go check out his link in the uh, uh, podcast description. Also, check out AngeloCataldi.com. Get his book loud. Find out all about his battles with the suits at WIP. Yeah, there's a lot of that in there. 
<laughs> I don't miss those, Angelo. I just like to point that out. I don't miss your fights. No, but when Rhea when Rhea writes her memoir, we'll find out the real story of all this. <laughs> And uh, thanks, as always, for listening. We appreciate you guys. We're always growing. Tell two friends. No, make it five friends about us. And uh, we'll see you next week.